Hello everyone, in today's video I will show you how to deploy NA10 with Docker. For this we're going to use this repository built by the NA8 team that's called Self-Hosted AI Starter Kit. And this repository has instructions for all the operating systems that you can use. I've cloned the repository locally in my environment. And what you have to do is actually just create a copy of the .env.example, paste it in here, and then change the name to it to be just .env. The next step would be to populate the environment variables in here to some values that make sense for your environment. Let's walk a little bit through the Docker Compose file that we have right here. So this creates a couple of volumes, a network, and all the services required by NA10, including also an Olama LLM service. You will see in the readme file that there are multiple ways in which you can actually deploy uh, NA10 using Docker Compose. So, so if you have an NVIDIA GPU, you can run the Docker Compose minus minus profile GPU NVIDIA app. If you have an AMD one, you can use the GPU AMD profile. And if you're using an Apple Silicon Mac as I'm using right now, you have two options. So you can run the starter kit fully on CPU, as I will do, or you can run a llama on your Mac for faster inference and then connect it to the NA10 instance. So I'll just use the Docker Compose minus minus profile CPU up, and we will have to wait a couple of seconds until everything is up and running. And as soon as everything is up and running, you can connect directly to NA10. You also need to provide an email username and password beforehand. But after you do that, you will see the workflows right here. And in here, I have a demo workflow that's loaded by default. And what it does is just chatting with the llama. So we can say whatever we want. So I can say, hey, how are you? And we get a response automatically. By the way, let me know in the comments what you use NA10 for. So this is very cool and powerful, especially if you have like a home lab that you can use. But if you are using like a personal computer, this is not going to help you very much because you'll need to have it plugged in all the time and open all the time. And that's why I've put together a very simple Terraform configuration that will actually deploy NA10 in Docker on an EC2 instance in AWS. So let's walk through what this does. So I have like a main TF in which I just declared an AWS provider, a key pair for my EC2 instance. Then a security group, and I'm opening a couple of ports, like 22, 80, 443, 5678, and also a 0 for egress. I'm using an Ubuntu image, and I have a couple of templates that I'm loading in CloudInit that you will see uh, here. And then I'm just simply creating an uh, EC2 instance based on that uh, AMI. Uh, I'm using uh, t2.micro instance type, and I'll show you in the variables in a sec. Uh, because I'm using a t2.micro and I want to have the cost as small as possible, I had to actually increase the size of the root block device because otherwise we wouldn't have enough space to install an A10 and everything else we need to make it uh, to make it run. And optionally, you can also use an AWS Route 53 zone to point out to the public IP of the AWS instance that you've created. In the templates, I have one template for the environment in which you have to set the Postgres user, password, encryption key, user management, JWT secret, and a couple of other details as well. And apart from that, I also have the user data template in which I just install curl and Docker, install uh, the Docker Compose. And then what I'm doing is I'm cloning the repository that I've shown you in the beginning of this video. And then I just copy the environment and I just run Docker Compose up as I've done before. So here is how the variables.tf file looks like. You have all the variables defined in here. And as you can see, some of them have uh, a default value and others don't have a default value. And I'm actually adding those particular values in the terraform.tfvars file, so we'll have to do that as well. Uh, this is where I'm using my public key from. Make sure this points to your correct public key. And of course, you can actually set this create DNS record to false and we will not create any DNS record and you can access the app directly from its public IP. So this solution is pretty easy to, to use. It's not quite production ready, I would say, because you would also need like a load balancer in front of it or at least uh, an Nginx installed because right now I'm accessing it only through HTTP. So let's see it in action. I'll just have to go to the correct folder in here, run Terraform in it, and then I will run Terraform apply. We will have to wait a couple of seconds until this is up and running. 
the apply finished successfully, but we will still have to wait a couple of minutes until NA10 is up and running. But if you are impatient as I am, you can just easily connect to the EC2 instance and we can just do a CAT on var log cloud init output dot log. It would actually be even better if we do a tail minus F to see it in real time updating. So we can see that right now it's pulling all the images we require. After a couple of minutes, everything is up and running. And you have two ways of actually accessing NA10. If you use the DNS record, you can use directly the DNS record output that you have right here. Otherwise, you'll have to use the instance public IP. So I'll use the DNS record for this one. So first, we'll have to set up the owner account. And as you can see, I am on na10.mydomain.com and I have the port right here because I haven't set up like a load balancer or Nginx. So I'll just do that. And as soon as I'm done, we can see the demo workflow. But in this case, because I'm using a t2.micro instance, this is not going to work because the t2.micro instance doesn't have enough RAM to actually run Olama. But what we can do is actually import another workflow. So right now I'm on NA10 workflows website, so we can just go on one of them, click on it, and then click on use for free. And we can copy this template to clipboard. Next, I'll save this copied JSON to a file, and I saved it in this one. And now we can go back to our NA10 instance, click on create workflow, and then we can just import from file. Then we can see that we have the entire workflow right here. Let's click on execute workflow and see what's happening. And we can see here we have the logs with a lot of details right here. I've added the GitHub repository in the description of the video, so make sure you give it a spin. And of course, you are more than welcome to contribute to it and make it production ready. So that's it for this one. If you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when new videos come up. I'm Flavius, see you the next time.